in this lecture we will continue with icmp messages used for error handling and debugging of internet so this time we will look at icmp query message okay so what are icmp query message so they are used for debugging okay so first one is icmp echo request message that can be sent by a host or a router and this is one of the very important messages which you are using a lot and that is in ping okay so you ping a machine you always say okay i'm pinging you in fact it has become a very local word for many engineering students okay ping so which means that i ping a host that is i am asking are you alive are you still there okay so icmp echo request is the message used and if the other host is there alive it will send an icmp echo reply so both of these are icmp message so an echo request message can be sent by a host or a router an echo reply message is sent by the host or the router that receives this echo request message and it will just tell that okay i am there yes you have requested me that i am is am i there it will send yes i am there so echo request and echo reply message can be used by network managers to check the operation of ip protocol that are the two in fact they are used to find that operation of ip protocol so is are they connected okay that is also important so are they connected is there the link working is this alive and and means this logical and is the link working so you cannot contact this host b a cannot contact it if first if this is broken or if it is not alive so it checks both of them and if both of them are true you get a reply back so let's move forward echo request and echo reply messages can test the reachability of a host this is usually done by invoking ping command which you do always so what is the type so type 8 is echo request and type 0 is echo reply code is 0 so here you have then checksum and you have an identifier sequence number and some optional data Okay, sent by the request message repeated by the reply message so let's look at some example then there is timestamp request and timestamp reply so this is another query message so timestamp request i request the other computer that okay please send me your time on your computer and it will reply with me with the time stamp reply it will send me the time now so its type of request is timestamp request as uh, type 13 and reply as type 14 code is 0 original timestamp is sent receive timestamp is sent transmit timestamp is sent okay so original timestamp i mean that it will be what i have sent you whatever is the timestamp at your place receiving timestamp and then the transmit timestamp is there Timestamp request and timestamp reply messages can be used to calculate the round trip time between a source and a destination machine even if their clocks are not synchronized. Okay, so is it so? So they are saying that timestamp request and reply messages can be used to calculate the round trip time. How much time is it taking? And even if the clocks are not synchronized so what can be done so if we have i put my timestamp here he has his timestamp here he puts that okay it is let's say a counter is running which is 1001 here and then a reply comes here so even if it is not synchronized then timestamp can be used so how is that possible let's try to see the next slide The timestamp request and timestamp reply messages can be used to synchronize two clocks in two machines if the exact one way time duration is known. Okay, so it can do other thing, 
looks fine that okay if i know the transit time that how much i take then i can synchronize my clock i can ask him what is the time at your clock then when i it comes here i know that the propagation delay is let's say 100 millisecond it says that okay it is one o'clock exactly at my watch then when it comes here okay then i know it is now one o'clock plus 100 millisecond okay so this is looking fine other was that even if the two clocks are not synchronized you can find the round trip time from here so let's see what are the fields that were available so it is claiming that so original timestamp received timestamp and transmit timestamp these three timestamps are given and you have to calculate the round trip time original timestamp i can send a request i can put my timestamp that okay it is let's i will put very large value so three o'clock here at my side receive timestamp the other party will in the request so he will know that okay let's say his clock was not synchronized he says that it is four o'clock transmit timestamp now what it does so this i will leave it you to you to reply me back how is it happening so this will be your homework when teachers so they don't know they usually put it that way that okay please solve this question for me okay so you also do that thing now let's move forward so we will move to now some of the debugging tools and as i had promised we will look at ping and trace route so they are interesting tools so one is ping to see the reachability and trace route will find for us what are the different routers through which a packet goes okay so let's look at ping and trace route so ping let's see ping fhda.edu so what will be the result this will ping the server fhda.edu now what happens oh sorry so it will ping and you will see and icmp sequence number zero so it sends five packets okay ttl is 62 round trip time taken is 1.91 millisecond okay so this is what so time taken from transmit so it tells that okay this it is sending in fact 11 packets to the fhda.edu server and replies are coming back to it and then it says that okay i got this is the statistics 11 packets were transmitted 11 were received 0 percent packet loss time is 10103 millisecond okay someone is coming so rtt minimum average and max total so the minimum round trip time was 1.899 millisecond max average is 1.955 and maximum is 2.041 millisecond to reach the ping it and let the reply come back in our next example we want to show if adelphia.net mail server is alive and running we want to check that so mail server you denote by mail.adelphia.net is it alive the result shown is here in this case 14 packets were sent only 13 were returned back one might not have replied may have interrupted the program before the last packets okay so see so i'm sending sequence number zero one two three four and what happens now is that for one of the packets 14 packets i sent but for one the reply did not come back the sequence number 13 so it now finally tells that 14 packets were transmitted 13 were received and there was one packet loss which comes out to be seven percent packet loss okay so this is the difference here now we will study trace route okay this is a very interesting concept and how it happens let's try to see so what we do it also is done using icmp so what happens that i have let's say this is the sender some routers and destinations so i will call it router r1 r2 r3 r4 and r5 r6 so now what i do i will send packets okay for finding what is the routers number one what is the second router in the path third router in the path so i will send ip packet 
very intelligently i will put initial ttl for the packet equal to 1 so when it comes to this router ttl becomes 0 because it is decremented it will r1 will generate a an icmp error message saying that okay ttl became 0 so time exceeded message but from here the source will be r1 so i will know that okay the first router in my path to destination d is r1 then i will send another packet with ttl equal to 2 it will traverse this ttl will become 1 it will go to this place ttl will become 0 and then this will send an icmp message source is equal to r2 time exceeded so now i will know that okay r2 is the second router then i will make ttl equal to 3 send again so 1 2 3 so it will 3 2 2 it will become 2 2 1 1 2 0 so r3 will now send a time exceeded message i will know that r3 is the third router similarly if i set ttl equal to 6 so 6 will become 5 year 4 year 3 2 1 0 so it will become 0 at r6 so sixth router in the path will send us the icmp time exceeded message and from those sources i will know that these are the routers in the path and it helps in tracing the routers in your path so let's try to see so trace route we do so fhda.edu so it is just three hops decor.fhda.edu dbackup.fhda.edu is the second router third is tiptoe.fhda so this is the router path for our trace route a longer path is there is to xerox.com i have nine routers in the path so it tells me that okay what is the ip address what is the name and how much is the time and this is something like all these three in milliseconds so what are they telling us okay so they will tell you so in fact they're decreasing so might be the maximum round trip time okay then millisecond this one is average and this is minimum and so on okay so this is there then an interesting point it says it can be done trace route can be done to yourself also and then one thing very interesting is that if some many times what happens many routers don't generate icmp messages also okay so because there are many routers inside autonomous systems isps for which they don't want to reveal the ip address so then what will happen they will not send any reply for them we will put a star that okay i don't know what is the ip address for that particular router okay so i hope you now understand what is traceroute command so thanks a lot.